What are the advantages of working with a, with a small combination like this evening? I, mean, I got the feeling watching you that there was a real conversation going on between you the whole time. I think that's, that's really it, is that there's, a, there's no keyboard, it's acoustic guitar, Trilog playing his crazy drums and percussion, and uh, Kai playing the bass guitar. And with that situation you have a lot of space. And uh, in one sense, you're very exposed, really kind of naked. There no big carpet of chords to, to support you. And, uh, but I like this. I like this very much. And in this space that exists in this music, uh, we can have a conversation inside the music itself. Well, the music is, is going anyway. Music's got its own message, you know, irrespective of who's playing. Uh, the musicians here, we can, we can enjoy a kind of dialogue. And uh, this is very important for me in the sense that, that it can bring an element of humor in, into the music, which is really important for me. You introduced one song this evening by saying this is a piece not for, but against something. That was a song called The Wall Will Fall. To what extent do you think politics is starting to play a, a role in jazz? I'm thinking particularly, for instance, because you've been involved in the past with rock music of benefit concerts that have taken place recently, be it Live Aid, be it the concert for Nelson Mandela, where rock musicians have come together to support something. Do you feel that, that perhaps jazz could do more in that direction? Uh, I don't think we need an excuse for a festival to do something about it. If you feel strongly about something, you will do it. And I think probably better if you do it incognito. Uh, because sometimes there's a tendency for people to jump on this social consciousness bandwagon and profit from it. And, and, I, and you see it, we see it. Um, groups that have been on Live Aid, they're using the Live Aid for personal publicity. Um, it is in itself very good because it makes people aware, in my opinion, of course, that it makes people aware of uh, uh, human rights, where they don't exist, where they should exist, because they should exist everywhere. And this is very important in making people more and more aware, and I think it's, it plays a very important role. Um, but we shouldn't uh, neglect uh, the individual conviction and uh, the, 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 to do something, and to do something but to do it secretly. I think this is also very important to do it anonymously. Uh, the role of jazz in that, um, it's got its role, but I think it's obvious that, that they're going to use pop music. Why? Because pop music is the lingua franca of young, whether they're from Leningrad, whether they're from Buenos Aires, or whether they're from Paris, or whether they're from New York. Pop music is, is really the language of the young people today. And that's where the future is, is with the young people today. I think it's a wonderful thing that they identify with each other whether they're from this country, that country, this culture, that culture. And they know in rock music or pop music, they feel a solidarity. And this is, this is a really great thing. They feel united. And it's, it's a wonderful thing. Uh, jazz uh, does, its, does its own role. But I think it does its own role in this, in this sense, um, in the sense that music does its role, because music uh, is the real power and the biggest anti-war power that exists, I think. Because it doesn't, doesn't care about race or politics or anything. It cares about a human being. I think it's interesting, though, that particularly in London at the moment, a lot of young people, I'm mean, thinking of people aged around 20, are starting to show a growing interest in jazz music. There are a few radio programs on English radio now presented by people aged about 20 who are playing jazz, but they're essentially playing a back-to-the-roots, more classical form of jazz. And there seems to be generally a moment at the moment a feeling that a lot of people are, are returning to the roots of jazz. What are your feelings about that? Oh, I think it's, it's got to be good. <clears throat> but I think we shouldn't confuse like when I've heard, say, like Charlie, the singer, they say, oh, it's the new Billie Holiday and this and that, you know. And I think this is really blowing things out of proportion. You know, she's not a jazz singer. Uh, and so I've got nothing against her personally, but, but uh, uh, the danger, like, like everything else, is the pop machine 
gets something and says, wow, let's exploit it, you know, let's use it. Uh, the fact that there's a real interest in jazz music is, is wonderful. But the, and jazz music will never die. I mean, it will have its heyday and then it will be less popular. Uh, I mean, it's, but we all, we all know this. Anybody who's uh, is a serious musician in jazz, I mean, we'll, we'll find this out very quickly. That, uh, that it has this, has this big popularity and then it has its... It's like the tide coming in and coming out, you know, nothing to worry about. I think we should end at that point. John McLaughlin, thanks very much. Thank you.